Hey, how you doing? So there is more. This, this is our uh, talk radio version. Briefly before the highlights come up. Still trying to figure out how to do these bull vignettes, all in like college basketball. Um, but I'm, I'm putting this ahead so that you know what you're getting in terms of the videos coming up. You could fast forward, and I'm not going to be here very long. Just going to go through a little thing called the Life Rant Sports Rant of the Day here on the OMSR. We do this on the longer football shows when we're actually filming, filming. But uh, I'd like to let you know. You know, the video clips coming up as well and go through the LRSR <clears throat> as it pertains to the subject being covered with regard to Baylor and, and UCLA. And uh, so like I said, you can fast forward you know, to the clips at what, about the three minute mark. I'm not going to talk much longer. Um, but we covered only like the third quarter. Was UCLA going to get it together by then? The answer is no. Baylor pulled ahead. Baylor has mauled quite a few uh, other teams this year. Interesting nuance to this game, you had Bears versus Bears. But it was more like UCLA Bear Cubs versus the Baylor Bears. Yeah, I, I, UCLA, kind of an enigma. I mean, they looked rockin', sockin', tough against Nebraska, which we have way back yonder, the second week of the year on this channel. I think playing Stanford twice sort of took a little bit out of them because I just can't explain Baylor just D doing that when West Virginia you know there's all sorts of questions that pertain to that well it's a different university different offense you're talking about and so forth but their D definitely got better as the year went along uh, you know i.e. the Kansas State game <coughs> so excuse me you know, uh, UCLA knocking out Matt Barkley in the USC game, that's going to cause a lot of bad blood around here. You know, in this town, uh, those universities are representative of how big L.A. is. When you're not from here, you don't necessarily root for one or the other, but people here, you know, they blade the respective colors, for sure. And so that's not, that's not going to sit well. That's just going to create more tension over the next upcoming years because if Barkley, say like his NFL career gets cut short, uh, you know, from that injury he took in a game versus UCLA where it was pretty much over there in like the final few minutes. And yet UCLA's D you, you know, you were you thumped Nebraska, but it's like that. Alright, clips coming up, third quarter, out. Baylor sealed the deal. Thanks for watching. Baylor all over UCLA here in San Diego at Qualcomm Stadium. The Bears put up 35 first half points. And they're on top go. by 25 over the Bruins. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Robert Griffin III was a once in a lifetime player. But obviously, this offense is pretty good without RG3. It seems like if you got a veteran that knows the offense, you really can can make things happen. Yeah, and it's been big plays. And, and I think it's been the combination of inside the tackles, running the ball hard. You've had C-Strunk, and now you have Glasgow Martin. You get six guys in the box. You get the good numbers, and you give the ball inside, and he makes one cut downhill and gets to the end zone. Very impressed with the way Baylor ran the ball on the inside. Then you get seven guys in the box. You want to take advantage of man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And what is UCLA going to do? They're going to favor Terrence Williams, obviously. Then you've got Tevin Reese, the fastest guy on this Baylor offense, one-on-one -on -one against Dalton Hilliard, and it's no contest. The combination of inside power running and the outside big plays has been lethal. And he was, uh, James was the intended receiver on that last play. Here's third and nine. Hundley has a man. Uh, incomplete. Jack Evans. Is going to be a face mask or something? That's uh, sort of a port end right there. UCLA will go for it. That is a great read. They got man to man coverage. Going for it. They want it to their best oh my God. Who let the cats on the set? Hello. There can't be two of you in there at the same time. kinds of things that you worry about. Right. What's going on in here? What? In, in bowl games and lack of attention to detail. You've got to go for it here yeah. on fourth down. Fourth is on the hill. they got to get away your turn. Deflected and incomplete. And Bear will take over on downs. Sam Hall. You're totally fucking up production here. Even if he completed the pass, he would have been short. Well, it was an all-out blitz, so the ball had to come out. 
Only throwing to the flat to the freshman Walker. Hmm. What a hit. Chance Casey. Corner physical tackle. Gain of about four on the play. Well, if nothing else, Baylor has come into this game and played hard with aggressive nature and ill intent. Everybody's telling them for a month how bad they are on defense, 119th in the country, and they've come out and played with attitude in this game. Hundley, a couple of pump fakes, and got him in! Shaq Evans on the... With fourth and 11, you try the field goal, 40 yards, try to make it a three-possession game. And the true freshman, Kaibi Fisher, Martin What did you make of Seastrunk's comments announcing uh, not only his candidacy for the Heisman Trophy, yeah. but pronouncing that he's winning? I think you got to take it in some context. I mean, we, we talked with Art Briles, head coach, uh, yesterday about it, and he didn't think it was a big deal. I happen to think it is a big deal. Of course it is. And sometimes you make mistakes, and I think if you ask Lake uh, tonight about those comments, he would say probably I would take those back. But you can't take them back and as they make a complete pass on the outside. Why is it a big deal? It's a big deal because it's a team game. I mean, why, Dave? News. I'm going to win the Heisman. I'm going to win it in 2013. If I don't, I'm going to get very close. I'm shooting for that goal. I will gladly say it. It's, uh, it's great to you, shoot for the goal. You yeah, but you don't case, run your mouth off about it. And, place. Place. On that, and I guarantee you. Yeah, as, you know, as a head coach, I'd be like, uh, you know, I'm right with you, Brian Greasy. He won a national championship without mouthing off about it. To keep him from making a comment like that, to put himself in a precarious spot. Shank. They punt it on fourth and one. Evans will scoop yeah. it up and take off. Exactly. Go. Boom. There you go. There's your SoCal athleticism for a bit. The punter, Spencer Rock, with the big hit by UCLA. Is it the Baylor? He's drunk first down and more. Breaks tackle inside the 30. And then finally brought down inside the 20 yard line by Aaron Hester. Hard to tell if that was a horse collar or not. Seastrunk in a game like this. And he says, you know, we're going to have an on campus stadium in 2014 with an indoor facility, $300 million invested, and that's what we need. Here's Martin, and it's going to be close. They haven't signaled yet. He's going to be down. It'll be fourth down. Let's we'll see if Baylor just punches it in here on fourth and goal or decides to take the points and get it back to a fourth possession game. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, what, what did our Brown say going into halftime up 35 to 7? He said, we came here with a lot to prove. This is a great opportunity for us to make a statement. The previous play is on the phone interview. Of course, they're going to review whether he got in, but I wouldn't be surprised if he just decided to go for it if they don't get a touchdown here. They get a touchdown, we're done. Uh, keep an eye on the ball here. Yeah, it's oh, it a touchdown. Like it crossed the line there. Yeah, we're done. It looked like Thanks for watching. We yeah, thought UCLA would be more physical. Or forearm or something. And again, the ruling on the uh, field is... They no certainly game. thumped Nebraska around. Second week of the year, back on our cha channel. Oh, you can't yeah. Tell whether the knees down the ball definitely breaks the plane. Definitely breaks the plane. They're probably going to call it touchdown. And if not, they're going to go for it on fourth down. We're done. UCLA will not come back from this. They can't do it. to the hey all you sports fans out there in the tubo sphere welcome to the one man sports rant to gen 2.0 i am your host will the alternative espn and every other network that we cover sports thrill specializing in college football and basketball and all of the other sporting events in their singular nature such as they may occur why such an emphasis on the college sports 
I was a linebacker and off guard at uh, the collegiate level, however short lived. Blew up both my ankles. Never was able to realize my sports prowess. Uh, walked on in both events, but uh, I was a non-traditional student, so I sort of screwed up high school, got my act together, got my butt back into college, and so I had to go that route. Uh, and I still suffer from those ankles. But the point is, I did not utilize my, stay in school, by the way, high school-wise, sports abilities to the best of their abilities, because streetball-wise, you know, I got a reputation still back where I was playing. So I'm not a spring chicken, but I'm not, uh, you know, going through a midlife crisis either. It's the best of both. The maturity with still the physical ability and speed to understand it all, I guess. All right. So you heard from uh, Accept, the original balls to the wall. It's going to be able to lead into for the rest of college football. By the way, this is the shorty version. This is the post-review show. As introduced by our Pi Kappa, Alpha. How Sweethearts, U of U Chapter, Alpha Tau, giving you props. All right, so what do I mean by all this? You know, if you saw on the timestamp this video, I mean, 10 to 11 minutes thereabouts, this is the post-review show, which is what I mean by those graphics that I included. Much like when you go to live steer, yeah, steer, theater, stage, show, and it's kind of sucking, people with class, you don't walk out on it until intermission. So... I understand if I'm talking to only two or five people, because this show may not be your cup of tea. But it is the post-review. You already saw all the clips, you know, to the sporting event that we were discussing about. And I'm not going to get into it uh, more specifically, because, again, this is the baseline show. And I'll get into the legalities as to why that is in a moment. I did used to run a law firm. So to those of you still listening, stick around, because you'll learn something about the particulars of YouTube. But uh, for the shows, you know, 15 minutes or longer, it's a totally different intro than what I'm doing right now. Right. So why bother doing a show, you may ask? Because the ship has sailed in the sense of just trying to piggyback on somebody else's network and going beyond the five to seven minute mark and just trying to put that up as not necessarily your own, but obviously from somebody else. You try to give them credit on YouTube. I'm sure you may have seen this. Uh, several times, your longer clips, say like beyond the four minute mark, where all they're showing is like the channel immediately. Ah, <laughs> that, no, that does not cover the legalities of it. What are the legalities I'm discussing? It's a little thing called the DCMA, the Digital Copyright Millennium Act. And the key tenets that we adhere to on the OMSR are, as they were hashed out through WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, fair use standard. Minimal use, derivatives, and no money exchange in hands. Of course, that last one's a given, but it's also important. But it's a given here because, as you can see, the OMSR is a pro bono production. We adhere strictly to that. And on that note, as well, all, in, all images you see on the OMSR, not procured or produced, two-minute warning, so I'm going over on time, by the OMSR, we're obtained through the public domain. So anybody out there saying, hey, Will, you're kind of using an image that we don't necessarily approve of, fine. Watch my dust. I'll take it down. Excuse me. Readjust it. The only sucky thing about that is you'll lose all the hits when you go to re-upload the same thing, plus the interest wanes on that particular event. But that's not important uh, as opposed to what I just said. All right. And on that note, this show is copyright to the OMSR. Brief video highlights courtesy to the networks already dis discussed through Will the Alternative Sports Throw. The OMSR does not own these video highlights, but does own all the other original content and the overall concept herein, thereof, therefore, most rights reserved. All right, so on that note, the two minute warning, we go back to our musical lead into Accept. The original to the nth degree falls to the wall. Perfect theme music for closing out college football. You got to play balls to the wall to get a winning record, to get to a better bowl, or VCS consideration. All right. So pay attention to the end graphic at the end of the show. VAC chart from the state of California DMV. They will throw the book at you. Worst state in the union, or best, toughest, whatever you want to call it. You get a DUI. You can pause it, freeze frame it. X amount of drinks, your body type. No X amount of activity. All right. Thanks for watching.
Later, Dave. There's only a few more college football plays.